Dave and Chase, and you are listening to The Movie Raid. It's time for The Movie Raid, and tonight's victim is Stephen Chase, producer of many other films such as Stan the Man. Hello. How are you today, Mike? Fantastic, fantastic. So tell us a little bit about what's going on with Stan the Man. I heard it's been premiering and doing all kinds of good things right now. You're absolutely correct. It's been doing real good. It's had some premieres at Rally Studios in Hollywood. It's fantastic there. The full cast was there, and we are out and running on uh, Amazon Prime right now. The distribution uh, to avail films, and uh, we're doing fantastic. We really are. Very proud of uh, everybody doing what they said they're going to do, and they did it. Did you produce this movie yourself, or did you have any other uh, hats to wear in this movie as well? Oh, yeah. No, there's plenty of plenty of hats in this one. Uh, produced, uh, directed, and uh, actually it was the lead actor, star of uh, of the movie. Beginning in the stages was uh, writing the screenplay. I um, was just coming off of a feature film called Garlic and Gunpowder, which I also was shooting in Temecula, California. It was about a week away of uh, the film shoot. Came up with this idea. I don't know, I just woke up in the morning and said, you know what, I'm just in the mood to do a rom-com. I need to do something light, funny, and inspirational. And once I rapped, I got to it and started working with uh, Robin Martino, who also was the producer on the film as well. And we teamed up to write this wonderful uh, story. I actually shot the movie within the same year we were writing. Came up with the idea in 2017 and started shooting in, I believe it was 2018. A lot of challenges and a lot of, I would assume, some frustration but has anybody else ever actually tried to put a little bit of their own creativity in this movie as well? You know, some of the actors that we casted, a couple of them we knew from uh, casting them in another movie, so we, we had that happen in there. Yeah, they all brought something wonderful to the to the characters. They, you know, I mean, there was a little, very little adjustments with working with them, especially with Angelo Pagan. We worked with him. He's fantastic. Dana Dory, who played the angel, who's fantastic. We worked with Captain Kelly Lang from Bold and the Beautiful fantastic and then an actor um his name is orson chaplin he's the grandson of 50s and i mean from the 30s charlie chaplin fantastic he, he's a really nice person they're all great people great actors was this something that was a little bit more tricky to adjust compared to your other films that you have worked with or is this something that you've been working with it's just uh, something almost like a breath of fresh air that you want to uh, try out a new vision but still have that adjustment mentality or did you f- thought that oh, we're just going to go with it and see what's going to happen with it i would have to say this is probably the best cast that I work with, that I was confident with. Other other movies that I work with, I didn't always direct them the movies, but this was a special cast. Stand the Man will always be a special movie to me. Uh, no matter what, it'll always be, you know, close to my heart because I know that everybody, part of the project, gave it everything they got. They loved the project, they wanted to be there, and, it, and, and they wanted to collaborate, they wanted to bring out the best in each other. Working in a comedy genre, and can this actually help an artist career or more or less terms to achieve a status or do you think this is, can be also a just a, a great emotion reliever at working in this genre and less of about worrying about career status I, I don't know about how other actors think about it if it's going to further their career I think probably you know in, in back of their mind it, it's something that everybody you know would like to happen I just did it because I just knew that it was something that manifested I think really from God to, to make this movie because I was relentless. I, I, I didn't take no for an answer. The actors that were attached to it were all perfect. They really were. I never really discussed anything about how they felt about how deep to them it just felt right. Just knew that they were the character. But I don't, I never discussed anything about their career getting further. Working in this kind of genre, it's it's great on many levels. The fact is that it helps you be in a better mood, for one, because let's say you've been doing a lot of horror and other dramatic roles and so forth. The fact is if, if, you're wor- if they're worried less about the career status of things, this is a good way to just kind of unwind and just have fun with it and then get back into m- uh, more of a motivation to get back, in, back to the drama roles and, and so forth. So that way it can kind of kick back and restart and refuel and uh, just get it out there again and, and succeed. It's good to 
to uh, not get stuck in uh, uh, one particular genre. You know, you need to move around. After we did Stan, came up with another project called Frankie's Redemption, and that's kind of like a, a mafia thriller type of film that's coming out next from Avail that we did. So we're working on a new feature as well, Ace, the uh, Christmas Miracle. It's a family uh, film. Now, do you pay attention what's going on in the indie filmmaking world in terms of, is this a right moment? Is this the right time to make this comedy movie in terms of financial? Dan the Man, I think, is going to do well. It's a light comedy. I think that a movie like this is good at, in any season. It's going to do well probably on the DVD circuit as well. I'm proud to say that it's coming out next month as Amazon Prime right now. Now, do you want to move more toward the directing route as well as producing? Do you think this is where this is something more the creative flow helps you to get other projects out there as well as helping the artists that you hire as well? Or do you, or would you rather go a different route in some aspects? Are you the type that would just like to just bounce everywhere when you can, when you can? It doesn't matter to me whether I direct a movie or not. I only directed this film is because I was really close to it. It's not easy to find a director that really understands this type of genre. It just went that way. But on the next one, um, I'm going to step down and just be an actor in the film and, and enjoy the rides. You know, sometimes it's just better to just let a real good director that understands what we're doing is which we which he does and you know just let that be you know it's just i, I need to take a break i i, I want to take a break from this from that and just uh, concentrate on acting for now emotion wise when you when you get back into this to perform again how, how's the emotions going to do you have to readjust that as well or are you are you pretty fixated that you know what you're doing what whatever movie that you're about to go into next you got to do a lot of studying, especially if you have a lot of lot of lines and you're going to carry the picture. Um, it's a lot better to work with a director that understands how to adjust the actors. Everyone's going to do what they do. If it's too low, it's raised up. The vibration gets higher. It needs to go down. It goes down. You know, it's all about the adjustment of the scene. It means broken down scene by scene. Being a director and also being a lead could be really um, challenging. Everybody gets a chance to do it, you know, what they want to do. I mean, there's a lot of actors there that graduated to being a director. Some don't even care about doing it, you know. they rather just work with the actors and work with a good director and then make a good project. It takes a lot of pressure off of you, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, and some of these artists lose interest. They, they Let's say they try the directing and then they love been doing more directing than acting and they go back to acting and sometimes that interest is, is gone and they just perform they may perform well but again it's about adjusting to the emotion stuff because they were so focused on the work that directing or producing and so forth that they get back into this and, and it's almost like you know you're kind of starting over again yeah start directing and all of a sudden you get the bug and you say you know what this is this is okay and if you make a hit movie then you know you're on to something and there's plenty of that happening through the years I enjoy being part of that type of good ensemble cast. That's what makes life a lot easier. You know, when there's problems, then there's problems. And, and that does occur, too. You know, where an actor doesn't bring it in and they get disappointed. Anything could happen on set. Uh, should an artist be about career choice? Or do, you, or do you think strategy of status is really a best way to go on some aspects? You know, there's no one way to do anything. you got to think out of the box. If you really want to be an actor or an actress... You you have to think out of the box. You have to really work hard, do a lot of socializing, go to a lot of events. You know, you need a good agent, good manager, really believe in yourself because you take a lot of hit, a lot of rejection. And as far as directing, that's a very tough um, occupation to get involved with. Usually they come from that world, uh, from acting, and good directors usually write as well. They, they, they do everything. And I'll, I know a lot of people believe in luck. I don't believe in luck. I think things happen for a reason. And I believe when the time is right, you'll get your opportunity. Just be ready. Just be ready because that opportunity will open. You know, you got to be in front of somebody that's important, you know, a producer, and you never know what, what's going to happen. You know, the sky's the limit. You just got to believe in yourself. If you believe it and you see it, it's going to happen. Especially, like, you have to structure of how your craft is going to be rather than structuring the image and, and so forth. The image is just image. Image is just presentation, but structuring how your craft is, then that's where, where the demonstration happens. And that's where you're going to succeed depending on what point of interest you're trying to get toward the audience. Yeah, structure. 
structure is a big important thing in, in life itself. You have to be disciplined. That's why there's a lot of hard work that goes into it, you know, acting courses, going auditioning for even theaters and plays. You have to do it all. You gotta you really in the beginning especially. All these wonderful actors you see now, they they broke their asses. People don't realize that they think they just come out of the woodwork. These people have been working for years, doing all kinds of things, all kinds of work, whatever they can get. And that's what it takes. Believe and pray. Do you see audiences change the overall visionary of future films today? Or do you think that audience kind of varies on their opinions and as how they see the films on, on the results as they are made? The way I see it now definitely changed tremendously for myself growing up. If the movies are targeted for a uh, special uh, demographic audience, mostly young, very young. Those are the movies that are put out by the studios and they're very successful because of the audience. They know that they already have a built-in audience doing sequels and reboots and all that kind of material. The audience is way, way different. Now, the platforms that are have, you know, Netflix and Hulu and these online, Amazon Prime, they're just people, you know, my age, they're older, they don't want to go to the movies anymore, they want to stay home and watch. So there's tons of material out there as well, but it's definitely a different audience. Oh, for sure. Go ahead and plug in any websites as well as your current projects that we can check out right now. And the Man is out. It's out on Amazon Prime right now. It should be coming out in a couple weeks on DVD and a couple other different, um, definitely a couple different outlets. It's definitely coming out on some more. There you have it, everybody. That is producer, director, actor, Stephen Chase. Thanks.